Hello, it's the first week of October here in Brisbane. My name is Paige Van Luntren. And my name is Molly Turner. This is Real World News. Here are your headlines. There has been another shock in New South Wales politics today after Dep Deputy Premier and National Leader John Barillaro announced his resignation. His departure follows the sudden resignation of former Premier Gladys Berejiklian when she became the centre of a corruption investigation launched on Monday. The tumultuous week for New South Wales Parliament also saw Transport Minister Andrew Constance quit his cabinet position in order to retain a federal seat. In global financial news, a team of investigative journalists say a, a number of high-profile politicians and celebrities have been hiding their wealth in banks around the globe. Portions of that report, which we know as the Pandora Papers, have been leaked, but the full report is due out any day now. In COVID news, Australia is due to hit a vaccination milestone this week with just 85,000 more jabs needed before 80% of eligible Australians have, have at least their first dose. Almost 4 million people have received jabs in the past fortnight. In related news, QUT Professor Linda Moroska has been named as the, one of the world's 100 most influential people by Time magazine. Fairly early on, Professor Moroska's research revealed that COVID-19 was being transmitted as an airborne virus. Also from QUT, painter William Robinson has a new exhibition underway in Gardens Point. The body of work is called Nocturne and explores his vision of the night sky. The show is currently underway at the William Robinson Gallery in Old Government House. A big weekend in sport for the Penrith Panthers, who claimed the 2021 NRL Premiership Trophy with a 14-12 win over the South Sydney Rabbitohs. It is the third Premiership for the Sydney club and the first since their win in 2003. Penrith playmaker Nathan Cleary was awarded the Clive Churchill Medal, while his father, Ivan Cleary, won his first Premiership as a Penrith coach. Those are your headlines. Checking the markets now, here is our Wall Street report. First up, yesterday was a tough day on Wall Street. The S&P 500 has had its worst day of trading since May and finished by sliding 75 points. This is partly out of fear of a potential crash in China's real estate market. All eyes are focused on Evergrande, one of China's largest real estate developers, who are yet to find out if the government will bail them out with creditors. This has commentators asking if this is China's Lehman Brothers moment, echoing the 2008 global financial crisis. And Australia's largest pipeline owner, APA, has made a non-binding proposal to acquire Osnet, an Australian energy company. The proposal offers $2.6 a share and trumps Brookfield's offer by 10 cents. This presents an opportunity for a combined Australian-owned group to be listed on the ASX. Finally, overnight Victoria's construction, construction industry is facing a two-week shutdown at a cost of billions of dollars per week. The shutdown was triggered by a violent protest against a government mandate, which requires all construction workers to have at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine by the 23rd of September. An angry crowd of 500 protesters gathered outside the CFMEU headquarters in Melbourne. They threw a crate and bottles at Construction Secretary John Setkar. Checking the markets, the Dow Jones closed by 614 points. The Nasdaq closed down by 330 points and the ASX 200 is currently trading down by 54 points. That's us minding your business. I'm Jordan Hubbard. See you next time. After a weekend of heavy rains, we must remember that this is storm season. Here's a look at your weather. Hello, Brizzy. Let's get started with the Aussie weather today. Darwin, sunny in 36. Cairns with, Cairn with a thunderstorm, 31. Brisbane. Sunny in 23, Sydney expects some rain and 17, Canberra and Melbourne both cold and a chance of snow, 6, Hobart snow and 5 degrees, Adelaide morning drizzle but clearing, 14, Perth warm and 25 and the Alice sunny and hot and 35. Closer to home, the sunny coast can expect a partly cloudy day in 27, Brizzy a sunny day 26 and the Goldie may have a late storm today and a temp of 26. The outlook for Brizzy this weekend is a cloudy on Friday, a possible storm on Saturday, clearing to a gorgeous day on Sunday. Back to you. 
The COVID-19 pandemic forced Brisbane's Greater Public Schools Association to shorten its rugby season. The finals just finished recently. Thomas Brandt has this report. The final round of the Greater Public Schools First 15 Rugby Competition took place over the weekend, with St Joseph's Nudgee College claiming their 43rd GPS Premiership. COVID restrictions meant each school only played five games, as opposed to the eight that would be scheduled in a regular season. The final round of action saw Nudgee defeat Ipswich Grammar School 17 points to 13 on their home turf. The victory was Nudgee's fifth of the season and was enough to keep them three points clear of Anglican Church Grammar School, who finished in second place on the competition ladder. The final round also saw a number of other close games. Brisbane State High School travelled up the range to take on Toowoomba Grammar School, but were defeated. 21 points to 19. The Southport School finished their season with a strong away win, defeating St Joseph's Gregory Terrace 29 points to 12 at Tennyson. In the final match of the round, Anglican Church Grammar School put up a strong performance to defeat Brisbane Grammar School 34 points to 10 at Northgate. That's our GPS rugby wrap up. Back to you. Silicon Valley doesn't have to be the only place for aspiring business leaders. QT is hoping that some of these would-be entrepreneurs might bring that creative energy here to university. Reporter Tegan Laszlo speaks to Professor Rowena Barrett about the QT scholarship program. Can you firstly just tell us about your current role and what it involves? So I'm Pro Vice Chancellor Entrepreneurship here at QUT and my job is to lead the priority for, for QUT around entrepreneurship, which is about building the environment in which all students, staff and alumni can engage in entrepreneurial action. And what attracted you to entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is all about creating new things, coming up with ideas but executing on ideas. It's not the idea that's important, it's the execution. So it's about making change, being innovative, creating the future out of not much. It's very exciting. <laughs> and on that, can you just talk about some of your current projects and what you're most excited about? Yeah, well, currently we have a project around um, budding entrepreneurs. So we know that there's a lot of entrepreneurial action going on in high schools, mm -hmm. yet students then make a choice. Should I go to university or should I continue building my business? So we have a number of scholarships on offer to students coming into QUT that allows them to uh, study for any degree at the university, but also build their entrepreneurial action as well. Yeah. And that's really important, particularly mm -hmm. as our first crop of budding entrepreneurs this year were four young women. Wow, yeah. And young women are often not the stereotypical entrepreneur. Yeah. Well, you've spoken a lot about breaking the mould for female entrepreneurs in the past. Do you have any current like female-led projects that you're working on? Well, again, though, the scholarships is an area mm -hmm. there. Um, it's incredibly important to break that mould because entrepreneurship is something that can be practised by all sorts of people. It's not just about building a tech business and heading off to Silicon Valley. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is something that you can take into your life. It's about creating and pursuing opportunities and building and gathering the resources that you need in order to do that. And as um, Pro Vice Chancellor of QT Entrepreneurship, why do you believe it's so important to involve university students in entrepreneurship? University is this incredible time in people's lives where you have freedom to choose and create the person that you want to be. Um, we can sit alongside your degree to amplify what you're doing. So as a trainee journalist, you can um, apply some entrepreneurial skills and create other opportunities for yourself. You might not want to work for a network. Mm. You might want to use your journalism skills to create your own venture, you know, to be a podcaster, a blogger, or, um, all sorts of things instead. So it gives you the skills to use in a range of different ways. Yeah. Um, and finally, do you just have any advice for emerging entrepreneurs? Yeah, look, it's have a go. You know, don't think about the perfect. Think about what you can do. Don't be scared of failure. Yeah. Failure is, you know, can be really quite frightening, but it's just an opportunity to learn and find the resources that you need. And at QUT, we have an amazing array of resources, connections, networks, mentors mm -hmm. who can help you on your journey.
Such great advice. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Rowena, and we really look forward to seeing your upcoming ventures in the future. Thank you. I'm Tegan Laszlo, and this is Real World News. See you next time. In the age of COVID, the social distancing rules vary from venue to venue. Ella Holding McGrath has this report. Play fair. These are the words being echoed across the state by the live music industry. Their calls to action come after strict regulations have been eased for sporting venues, while the entertainment industry still faces comparatively harsh restrictions, which are stunting revenue and employment. Currently, sporting events are operating with 100% capacity and little enforced social distancing. Yet, in a move that has confused many, the state government refuses to apply similar loosened COVID restrictions to live music venues. Currently under the restrictions that are in place by the, the Queensland government and the chief health officer, we're, we're about 30% capacity. Uh, we're operating in that one person, two square metre rule. The Palaszczuk government has come under fire for these differing restrictions with outcry for a scientific explanation ringing loud. I don't think the government uh, understands entirely what it's doing when it comes to its response to the pandemic. The Premier relies on the so-called health advice. If there is health advice that somehow discriminates against the entertainment industry, provide it to us so that you can substantiate these decisions. But respiratory and virology experts say there is a legitimate difference between sporting and music events when considering the spread of the virus. And that difference is singing. There's definitely a uh, work out there that says that more forced breath, like with singing, pushes loads more virus out. If you have COVID-19, you're infected with the virus. In a state that's seen such small numbers of cases for consecutive months, however, this explanation isn't enough for the outraged community. And if no changes are made, the live music industry confronts closure of venues and the loss of thousands of jobs. This daunting reality has given rise to a main player in the fight to ease restrictions, the Playfair petition. It's described as a life or death last chance to support Queensland's music industry. Just an overview of the Playfair petition is that we, we don't see the consistency in having 50,000 people at Suncorp Stadium. Uh, you don't get dropped in by a drone to your seat. You mingle through bars, you mingle through everything. So we think there's inconsistency there. So you know, if it's if it's a risk, what you wouldn't do, you wouldn't do Suncorp. Some suggest Queensland should adopt other states' approaches, and industry workers are keen to implement changes that can ensure the safety of patrons while still allowing for larger capacities. However, while the state government remains largely silent regarding the issue, the future of the live music industry remains. Sure. That's the news here in Brisbane. My name is Paige Van Luntren. And my name is Molly Turner. This is Real World News. See you next time.